Hi, you're listening to the Android Guys podcast. My name is Scott Webster, and I'm sitting here with John Weston. How are you, sir? I'll tell you, man, it is cold out. It is. We have definitely hit that cold winter time, and it is evident. I think we have another day of this, and then it's 50 again, so... I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I want rain again. Uh, so let's talk about something here. Uh, you and I have talked about internally, but uh, something that's coming up here. So next month is Mobile World Congress, or it would be this month if you're listening. Uh, and with that, that brings a lot of flagship phones, a lot of major announcements from players like Samsung and LG uh, Motorola typically right around this time of year and we start to see a lot of the phones that are going to be the big releases of the year so what we're finding though over the last few years are the prices are creeping up to you know well over a thousand dollars for some of these devices and uh, we just wanted to talk to you and just kind of put this out there a little bit of rhetorical conversation and just some insight into that space uh john you've been following smartphones since day one yeah um do you remember when they all used to cost 200 bucks with a contract i do that was the common price even looking sometimes at that 200 hundred dollar phone felt a little high but it was it was such a cool device yeah. you wanted it wasn't you wanted to have it well everything that would be you know in a smartphone, it just felt like, man, for 200 bucks, this is a lot of device. There's no way it only cost that. And every carrier seemed to have their flagships and they had their exclusives at the time. And, you know, back in 2008, 9, 2010, when they really started to pick up steam, that was just a common price. You rarely saw something hit 250 if ever $300. And a lot of people didn't realize this, but you and I come from a background, we sold phones. Right. So we knew what phones cost. And when somebody would come to us and sign a contract, we, they would get the phone for, you know, $70, $100, whatever it was. And with smartphones, the price always seemed to be, you know, right around that $200 sticker. Once in a while, one would drop at like 180 and it would be a little bit different phone. But... By and large, that was just what phones run. And invariably, people would drop their devices, break them, or need to replace them, want to buy another one. And that's when they would come to us or just go to the store and, man, why does this thing cost $700? Yeah, it was so upsetting to people, and rightfully so, because I mean, there was that perception that the actual hardware cost of the phone is what you were paying for it right and not that the carrier was making it up after so many months and they would finish it up off the back end of their contract that 24 month contract that phone was getting paid maybe for like the first 18 months right and they really made that you know that nice cushion and that's what it was it. it was a contract and that's where the money came from it was hey if you cancel we're going to hit you with like 200 bucks a line for doing that. And that money went towards not to cover resources or their network or anything. It was to so that they didn't end up losing on the handset. So around 2013, T-Mobile stopped doing contracts. They just completely went away from them. And at that time, we were starting to see phones that would, you know, People started to kind of see the prices of phones going up uh, and they could actually see the cost of devices. But when T-Mobile stopped doing contracts, they kind of exposed the price of them. Yeah. You know, so somebody would go to buy a phone through them and they would see, hey, this thing is actually $400 phone. This is a $700 phone. And at that time, you could really see a difference between the low end and the high end. Mm -hmm. And it was at the time... You know, this has one gigabyte RAM. This one has two gigabytes, three gigabytes. And that was a big difference. That makes a big difference in performance and processor speeds, storage. So a lot of that was just kind of like like the computer industry, which is hardware. Right. So other carriers got on board and they started to say, hey, you know what? We're going to drop contracts too. 
and we're going to go with, you know, we're going to do some equipment installation plan. So now, instead of signing a contract for the service for two years, you're basically going to make an agreement with them that you're going to pay for the phone over two years. Right. So you're you're not subsidizing. You're not doing anything where like, man, I got to buy this seven hundred dollar phone outright. No, we'll spread that out, and over the next two years, as long as you pay twenty five, twenty eight dollars a month, that phone's yours. Right. And if you leave, all you got to do is pay the difference. Pay what you owe on the phone. So that was kind of nice. It was. I think for a carrier, though, T-Mobile did it, and their cost for that, the actual service was so much lower. Right. You know, and that looked really appealing, especially when you compared that price to a competitor like Verizon or AT&T, but with a subsidized price. So there's such a disparity Mm -hmm. between those prices. And so now maybe we can look at the contract price or the service price, oh, it's a little bit lower, or maybe you get more bang for your buck. But, you know, we do have to keep in mind, too, that those subsidy prices aren't in there anymore. Right. So. Well, and I, I did some quick math here just to kind of break down the prices of phones. And all I did was take the number and divide it by 24 months. So over two years, this is what you're looking at. A $500 phone, you're looking at about $21 a month. So over two years, you pay 21 bucks a month for the device on top of what you're paying for the carrier. So if you're paying $40 a month for your plan, 50, 80, whatever, if you're buying the device through them, now you're paying $21 a month on top of that. Family plan, you double that. Uh, If you have kids you start to add that in there uh, jumping up to say 700 bucks for the phone now you're at 29 dollars a month doesn't sound like a lot of difference you're paying maybe eight dollars give or take but you're saying hey i want that new phone i want that latest and greatest i don't need that you know um, i don't want a, a mid-range device i want to keep up with everybody else i want everything that i see in the commercial it looks awesome so you're only paying a difference of eight bucks a month. And if you did that, hey, my whole family, we're gonna outfit them in a fleet of flagships, everybody gets a new phone and it's only a difference of like maybe $20, $24 a month for everybody to have that. But now we're starting to see phones get into 800, 900, 1,000, even more for some of these like, hey, if you want the full device, you know, specced out with the most memory, storage, and all the bells and whistles, you're getting into well over $1,000. And a common thing that people will say is, well, I didn't spend that much on my computer. Right. At $1,000, you're looking at about $41, $42 a month. So about twice the $500, obviously. But that's where it starts to get expensive. That's where, you know, man, that S9, that S10, whatever, you know, it's going to come out this year. That's a lot of money to get that flagship. So now right. you're you're way beyond the mentality of $200 a, for a phone. Right. And you see the true cost of those. Now we're finding out uh, over these longer studies that they're seeing that people are sitting on these phones for two years, longer, you know. When smartphones first came out, people couldn't wait for the new generation. Yeah, I can't wait for, you know, you would hear this with iPhone users all the time. I would hear, oh, I can't wait for the iPhone 5. Can't wait for the iPhone 6. Like, people just couldn't wait for that. Yes. You know, the droid. There was so much new stuff. I mean, they were, they had more storage. They may have more power. They were thinner. They were had like maybe nicer screens, right. higher quality screens. I mean, there was, you knew it could do, it could handle more processing power for the apps right so you knew the apps you're running were going to get better and it was it was exciting and you know we've said before and a lot of people will say like android had things first and apple you know mm-hmm. it, it's back and forth uh innovation revolution versus evolution that completely different topics but people would see something in a phone and know that hey the next generation of this lg is going to have this or I have this Motorola phone and I can't wait for this phone. Like, they knew what they were going to get or they anticipated something. And people were, at that time, content to pay for that. So now when you look at devices and you see the cost of them, you know, inching up into $1,000, it's crazy. So people are sitting on these and 
not because they don't want to spend the money, but because they don't need to spend the money. Right. You know, yeah. Hardware has far outpaced user demands. So now it's not a matter of, you know, three gigabytes of RAM, four. Now it's six and eight and even more. Well, yeah, and Samsung just talked about them having one terabyte available. Of storage. Of storage right. in phones, which is so cool. But on the other side, you have, like, especially Google, I think maybe mm -hmm. more than anybody, pushing all cloud first. Right. You know, cloud storage first, so you have all your, your music. Yeah, you download it and whatever. But there, it is kind of uh, interesting how the hardware is getting to the point where it almost doesn't matter as much right. anymore. Well, yes, your phone has a 1,000 gigabytes a terabyte right and i'm okay over here with 64 gigabytes right so i don't need to spend the money on that and a lot of people you know i get questions for the last decade people would ask me hey what's this new phone i see what's the difference between that and i've got the s7 what's so special about the s8 and over time it gets a little bit more difficult to distill that down to people to be really quick about oh it's got twice the storage you got a much better camera right because it, it was like this new i mean it may be geeky speak but it's like this new qualcomm processor is there but what does it do well no it has a graphics built in or it has right. an accelerator here it's going to allow games to play better it's going to allow you to take you know pictures to process faster it's going to allow you to take like a 4k picture you know that wasn't even possible right you know before because the speeds weren't there so those things made that a huge difference and now we look at devices and so what's the emerging technology it's ai yeah it is you know we're starting to see desktop mode where you can turn your phone into a computer of sorts and plug it into a display and now you've got you know bluetooth keyboard and mouse if you've got a little computer in your pocket right awesome stuff all in theory how many people do you know that are going to say you know i'm considering a laptop i'm considering a new computer or a two-in-one uh, maybe I should go with the S9 because I can plug it in and use it this way. Or Huawei has a device that I can plug it in and use it as a computer. That's where that terabyte comes in handy. That's where it becomes really yes, vital to have I that. I agree. But how many people in your life, real world, do you know that are going to ask for that or need that? I don't know of anybody who is even going to look at the dual screen the foldable screen right so i i mean it may be really cool but it just doesn't feel like something that anybody not anybody it's going to be this true early adopters like yeah bleeding edge type folks to try it but right i just don't see folks who say oh, i need that that's going to be or i and i don't know what your thoughts are on this but is it going to last right you know am i going to invest in this new technology and then in a year or two, they say, oh, the adoption wasn't strong enough. Right. And they drop it. It's like, well, if I buy this, or I'm going all in on this, and I may buy the extra items to make this my world, but there's not an upgrade path. Right. That's, you know, Or difficult. worse, what happens if I'm responsible for it not being around a year from now? What if I drop this thing? Right. Sure, I can plug it in and maybe get the media off of that, but it's, now it's not a practical phone. You know, it's... Right. I'm not getting everything out of it that they sold it to me for. And that's where, you know, this is kind of an interesting time now where, you know, Apple just recently had its earnings and we've seen that, you know, they've come out and they're admitting that maybe they've gotten too expensive. Their phones are maybe a little bit too, too high. You know, yeah. I keep my ear to the street for Android stuff. I don't follow Apple uh, super close, but mm -hmm. I have a hard time... Knowing the difference between the iPhone 10, 10R, 10S. I actually had it flipped. Like, no joke. I was, whichever one is the better one, mm -hmm. I was thinking it was the other one based off of previous generation right. differences. Or number, like. Yeah, the number, yeah, the, like the, the naming convention. Right. And I was like, well, this is the better one, right? It's like, oh no, it's the other one. I'm like, well, what is this? What does this one have? Mm -hmm. And in, you know, that they're keeping the 8 now, too. And talking right. about bringing it back in SC. And I'm like, this is getting really, really muddy. Mm -hmm. And it is really difficult. And 
and then when you like talk on the Android side, I mean the phone pricing for like the Samsung flagships, obviously the Pixel phones, you know, they have been really coming up. I mean their pricing is you know nine hundred, a thousand, I think eleven hundred. Yeah. I think with different options, how you build it out, and I don't know how most you know the 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 common population will re- continue to respond to that. I mean, if Apple is feeling the heat yeah. of that price point, you know, I, I feel it creates then, a limit for the Android users as well. Right. So then that becomes a situation of do you, you can't slow down innovation. You can't help it if you come up with a new technology or a new really cool thing you can do. Uh, that's tough, but at what cost? Yeah. You know, so that that's kind of rhetorical. Uh, I, I don't know how you address that if you're an OEM. Do you slow your release cycle down? Do you go instead of, you know, it used to be annual, like almost clockwork for a lot of these, but then we saw some competition for a while where one would try to beat the other one. It might be at an 11-month cycle and yeah. trying to get out there. And I, I'm okay with waiting. I, I know a lot of people that, you know, when the Pixel 3 came out, they were like, cool, now it's time for me to buy the Pixel 2. Or when the S9 came out, Great. Now I can buy the S8 because it's you know two hundred bucks cheaper. These are still amazing devices. Right. They are, and I feel I mean folks that I've worked with, places I've I've worked, a lot of folks have been happy. They say I'm on right an S6. Yeah. And sometimes we try to refresh them like every other. Mm-hmm. We did you know when I was there and. Um, so when somebody had a couple generations, it was because of the battery too. Yeah. You know, the battery's dying. You can't replace those. I mean, there, there were some good reasons and I feel other folks are the same way. Now, like Bubble World Congress is the end of February. Right. So when do the new phones So you're looking probably March out, for March. most of those. Springtime. Okay. So springtime's coming. March is, you know, will come, new phones come out. And so that's when people are going to make the decision. Yeah. Do I buy the latest or do I hit this, you know, the last generation? I think something's going to have to happen over the next year or so. And I don't know if that's prices just have to get more realistic for consumers, have to entice them to upgrade once a year or get them back to cyclical releases. I don't see anything in, you know, I get a chance to review a lot of these phones and I see some really awesome stuff, but I'm looking for that stuff. I'm, you know, told these are some of the features. Uh, Keep an eye on those. Phone makers will say, hey, this is what we're promoting the phone around. They'll send you notes of what some of the cool features are. And a lot of that is stuff that's kind of not physical hardware, not something that you can point at in a bullet point and say, Eight gigs of RAM. Feel the difference in that from a four gig phone. A lot of that stuff is like, hey, our camera has some really cool AI. And when you go to take a picture of food, it's going to make some adjustments because it detects that. And you don't have to mess with filters. We're going to change the color and we're going to pop that. Or if you're taking pictures of nature, we know what you're looking at. Uh, We're smarter. We have digital assistants, Google Assistant, Siri, um, Bixby, you know, so there's... Yeah, well, I, w- I think one that's really great is the Pixel's Active Edge. Right. That is something where, to me, it was until you had that, how amazing it is to be able to squeeze the side of the phone yeah. and launch the Google Assistant instead of having to press a button or using the voice command mm-hmm. to launch it every time. It always works. With the voice command, sometimes it picks it up and sometimes it doesn't. Right. To be able to just quickly squeeze and go, like, those are some neat features that... So, yeah, and yeah. some of that comes with having to use it and seeing it or just having it in your device. But for an average person, if I tell people my phone can do that, they're like, oh, that's kind of cool. Right. You don't, I mean, I showed it to my wife, and at first she's like, okay, whatever. Like, no, no, try it. Mm-hmm. Like, this is why it's better because you don't have to worry about it picking up your voice, yep. which it doesn't do sometimes. Or, you know, doesn't, right. you don't want it, right? And so it's like it always works. And then when you start playing with, like, oh, that actually is really cool. Right. And for me, that specifically was something that I was 100% convinced I was never going to use. And it's just like, yeah, whatever. It's kind of a gimmick. It's kind of a, I don't know why they put that on here. I use that more than anything. Mm-hmm. I use that more than opening it up. Or if I'm already on my phone, opening up Assistant, I will actually just squeeze the edges of the Pixel phone 
just to do that because I've become accustomed to it. But I am now looking at some of this other technology of like folding screens, um, AI that's in cameras, and, and it's a hard sell. And I'm somebody yeah. who gets to see this stuff as it happens, as it comes out. Right. When you look at you know statistics, we're seeing that people are sitting on phones. They don't need to jump to the new phones. So I feel like there's a lot of that stuff is hard sell. And it could be a generation or two before people say, oh, man, I really want that. Apple, when they run their commercials for the first, I don't know, six or seven years of the iPhone, there were a lot of things that they did in their commercials that would make people go, ooh, I want that in my phone. Yeah. Well, we didn't have that, you know, with Android, we're like, no, wait a second. We've had that for two years. Right. Android, kind of, <laughs> those phone makers, they built theirs up on, you get so much more for your money hardware-wise, and we're first to the table with some of these features. It was almost, like, the wrong way to go. And I don't know if we've conditioned consumers or if they've conditioned people to say, I don't, you know, you don't see things that are like, ooh, I want that on my phone. Yeah. We're starting to get a little bit of that with the Pixel 3 and Google's commercials for, like, the flash, the front-facing selfie with the uh, the wide-angle lens. You right. Know, you're seeing a little bit of that. So that might be where we're going. But I, I don't look at anything that's on the roadmap technology-wise or software-wise that's going to make somebody really want to jump out this year and say, I have to have this phone. Most people don't know what's in the next generation of phones. We're in that vocal minority. We're in that very niche um, early adopter. We know what we're looking at. We actively seek that stuff out. Right. So we see that. We have an idea what's coming. But by and large, you know, getting back to the point earlier of, I can't wait for this phone because it'll do this or because it has that. We don't really have that anymore. And I think it's more of, well, I don't really need that. I, I'm okay with what I have. Uh, I need to get rid of this phone. It doesn't seem to be holding a charge as much anymore. Or it's getting a little slow. Yeah. That's where a lot of consumers are. I think so. And I think it's important for us as technologists and anybody who listens who is that early adopter to remember that a lot of the people that we work with, people in our families, they may not want the upgrade. They right. may not want the new software. They may not want to go through the hassle of setting up a new phone and all that because it really is a frustration. Mm -hmm. And most people, you want to make a call. You want to get on the internet. You want to go on social media. Take pictures. And take pictures with it. I mean, you know, use some cool apps. But it's just, you know, it's they're, like they're computers. not wanting stuff. Yeah. Where people say, well, I just want to get on the internet. I want to do some of my homework. I want to do some web browsing and... Maybe play with a few games. Everything does that. Every computer does that. Right. So why would I spend two thousand dollars when this eleven hundred dollar computer works for me? Right. You know. So that's where we are with phones. Is I just have these minimal usages or use cases, and every phone seems to handle that. Now, after using something that's got four gigs of RAM and a super high resolution screen and an all day or two day battery going to another device that's you know three hundred dollars you do see that difference yeah but that's because it's like driving a luxury car and then saying hey i want you to drive this you know economy, economy vehicle right and say okay uh, man there's some definite changes right you feel like oh yeah the seat is a little more stiff right it doesn't quite have that handling and, and not as efficient and i can't you know i don't get uh the leather seats and I don't have some of the digital stuff. It's man like there's all these little things that make the difference in cars. Right. And that's where we are with phones is I you know what? I, I don't need that. Sure it would be nice, but I just don't want to spend that money on that. Yeah. Um and one other topic before we wrap here is software updates. Yeah. A lot of times when you say, hey, this S nine and I keep using that as an example, but or any phone, if it's got Android 8 or launches with Android 9. In, in the past, people would say, hey, um, when is my phone getting this software update? You know, we would look for that. And that's that vocal minority. That's yes. that, you know, we know what we're looking for. And we're the people that are on Reddit. We're the people that are leaving complaints and yeah. comments. And at, tweeting, hey, where's it at? Why does my phone not have this? But 
statistics show that that's such a small piece of the it pie. Is. And a lot of people don't know what updates are. A lot yeah, of my right. friends or family, they'll get an update on their device and they'll ask me, hey, what is that? And a lot of times it's, oh, it's a security or a patch or, you know, it's a major one. Oh, yeah, you got Android 9. That phone was updated to that. Mm-hmm. And in the past, people would get a phone. And when you tell them, oh, there's a software update coming, what did you hear from people who tend to get these updates on older devices? Is it going to break something? Right. <laughs> What's going to go wrong if I, if I do this? Or where did this go? I, I used yeah. to be able to yes. do this. Um, I don't like this. Things it, would move. Icons would change. <laughs> I don't like the colors now. I, I was so used like, right. there's a lot of that. Like we care about updates and it's important to get the security updates and to get the patches and the, the, the fixes as often as possible. Google does an amazing job of pushing that stuff out monthly for its devices. Right. And we've heard for years and we've seen things get better of supporting devices for longer and getting more timely updates but that's something that, uh, for the people who really, really care, it's such a small number. It is. Like, I'm the person who, if I see that update sitting on a phone in my household, I'm like, oh, got to run that update. Yep. I'm the one who's going to go check for the update on the phone. Right. Where my wife sits there and she's like, oh, you're not running another update on my phone, are you? I'm like, yeah, it needed one. But I don't really need it. Because right. you don't want anything to happen or anything to go or it's going to have to sit and reboot. I'm like... Yeah, but the last time you did so this different. to my phone, this stopped working. Right, right. And it's so funny because it's like I'm thinking like, I want it. I want the update. When's the update coming out? I'm going to check all the devices for updates. I want to make sure they're all up to date and plugged in and charged. Right. And and everybody else is like, don't run the stupid update. Like I can't wait for the new notification system, the, the to be able to manage notifications or right. to be able to reply from within the like bar and all that stuff came out. Yeah, it we is, we care about that stuff and people, you know. General people, um, did you notice that when you got your update? Oh yeah, you know what I did. I did see that. Like, right. man, we're you know, when they announce a new version of a platform, or major releases and updates, there's a there's a lot of fanfare if that's your circle. Yeah. But we are seeing that the circle's not very big, and that the bigger circle is. Uh, I don't care. I'm. I don't need to spend that. So when you look at these phones. You know, people don't have to pay really for early termination fees anymore. A lot of companies, they will dangle great incentives to get you to sign up for them. Hey, we'll buy out your device, trade it in. People are almost leasing these devices. Yeah. Um, so there are some people who kind of keep at that top line and they're always trading that stuff in. But I think that top line has to change. I, I think some, not necessarily hardware or price or... Uh, I mean, it's hard to to just say this is what's responsible for that, but I think something will change. I don't know what it will be. Uh, do you have a cure all pill that people can take to fix this? I don't think so. No. <laughs> um, so I, it's this is one of those topics that there's really just no definite answer to. There's no definite end to. You can debate and go on, but. I think that's going to wrap it up here. Uh, if you're listening to the show and you have feedback or questions or anything to add to this, I, I, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at podcast at androidguys.com. Um, and if you're just listening to us for the first time, we appreciate you checking us out. Uh, we try to do this about weekly. Uh, the show is a little bit shorter than... Your, your one-hour shows, we probably get to about 20 minutes or so. This one's maybe half hour, but um, we try to keep them on one particular topic. Uh, we've got some great things lined up topic-wise. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, uh, any feedback that you have. Check out our podcast anywhere you normally listen to your shows. Subscribe to us and let us know how we can improve. If there's anything uh, topic-wise or production-wise that we could do to make the show better, uh, we would love to hear from you. For John and myself, thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon.